In any tragedy, there are heroes and cowards. We'll be exploring two stories today, one of a would-be hero and one of a pitiful coward. If you go south of Bunker Hill, you can follow the road until you find an alleyway that takes you off the main path. Inside the alley, you find a three-story house covered in Halloween decorations. It's not marked on the map, but you can enter it. The inside is dark and covered in filth. There's a lot of loot all over the place to keep you busy, but there are also some holotapes. The first one is on floor one. Entry three, recorded by research assistant Peters on February 26th, 2077. Time, it's 12.35 hours. Subject's direct radiation exposure level increased to two sieverts per 24 hours. Intravenous fluid intake increased to one liter. Subject reports localized pain in frontal and parietal lobe, accompanied by severe nausea, vomiting on average, three to six instances per 12 hours. Solid food no longer viable by oral intake. Other symptoms include general weakness in limbs, bleeding of gums, severe abdominal cramps and diarrhea. Dark stool indicates possibility of intestinal bleeding. Shortness of breath also an issue. I will now describe changes in mood or thought process. I have never in my life felt as horrible as I do right now. The discomfort is almost too much to bear. I often contemplate termination of this trial. But I know, I know it'll only be a few more days before I reach six Sieverts. Then I can administer the serum. We'll get our contract renewed. The serum will go to the market and it's going to help people. It's really going to change the way we live. And me, I'll be <coughs> fine. I'll be fine. Cyclical thoughts. No other, no other developments to report. Looks like we're missing a little bit of the story here. This is entry three. Research assistant Peters. When she started, it sounded like she was observing an experiment on somebody else. But we quickly understand that she herself is the subject matter. She has experimented upon herself. Why would someone do this? Why would someone expose themselves directly to radiation? We'll learn more once we reach floor two. Entry six, R.A. Peters. It's March 1st, I've, I mean the subject has reached saturation threshold safely. Taking measurement now. Confirm six Eberts. Rapid fluid loss due to fever, huffed IV intake. All previous symptoms are still present. Tissue damage visible on arms, neck and hands, necrotic slopping of the skin. Topical and ingested antibiotics applied to control infection. Now injecting first dose of serum sample 42BA7 into bloodstream. No immediate effect. Animal trials yielded results in less than... <laughs> Again, we're missing some of the story, but we're rapidly seeing what's happening. She's aggressively using the serum that has been supplied to her, but nothing is happening quite yet. You can also tell that she's having a problem organizing her thoughts into words. Animal trials yielded results in less than... Hmm... Clearly, she expected it to work by now. At the top of the building, we find a door. We already know what's on the other side. Teeth at this 
massaged. Oh, feels like oh, necrotic tissue damage throughout oral cavity. <sighs> Serum is ineffective at toxic levels. Request to terminate trial was orders are to remain in quarantine for the duration of the experimental period. <sighs> I understand. I'm going to die. That's obvious. It's right here. Our failure. If you would, Dr. Roberts, please deliver the following to my family. Mom, Dad, I love you. Yes, I volunteered for this. It sounds crazy, but I believed in it. Probably nothing left worth bearing. There's just no way. Oh, no. That's a bit too sentimental. At the beginning, I said that some people are cowards and some people are heroes. Heroism is not always smart. And that's the case with this story. This doctor, filled with optimism, leapt at the opportunity to volunteer for this experiment. She was going to save the world. She was going to be part of something big, something miraculous, something that was going to cure ghoulism across the Commonwealth. But reading into the tone of the holotapes, I begin to see the other doctors, or at least the people giving her orders, as part of a butcher shop. I think they knew from the beginning that it wouldn't work, but it was one more checkbox to tick on their list. Have we tried it at this toxic level of radiation yet? No? Let's find some young, idealistic scientist who wants to save the world and put her in some quarantined room and douse her with radiation and give her some sort of serum that could possibly work and when it doesn't we'll check the box off and that's going to make our list neat and tidy and orderly. But we're reminded towards the end of the holotape that this was a real person in this fantasy world, a real person with family, who attempts to leave her final words before she's turned into a ghoul. It's interesting that in the end, what's on her mind is not really the experiment and its failure. It's not her career and her degree. It's mom. It's dad. It's the people she loved and the people she's wounding forever with her own death. Heroic? Yeah. It was heroic to volunteer for this trial. It was selfless, but also selfish. She sacrificed herself, but she also thought of her own glory. She sacrificed herself, but she didn't think about her parents until the very end. Heroic, but foolish. And then there are the cowards. We might have a lot to say about heroes who die, who have vain hopes, and who are silly, and who make poor decisions, and who are idealistic. But cowards, they operate within a realm of evil that's hard to truly understand. The Electric Hobbyists Club is drenched in radiation. It's also booby-trapped. If you're not careful, if you're not careful, you could get blown up very easily in this place. Once you wind your way through the building, avoiding all of the booby traps, you find a door to the underground cellar, which is free of radiation. Inside the cellar, you find parts of a disassembled assaultron and quite a lot of loot, and three holotapes on a desk. The first one, labeled March 15th, sounds like this. Coral, it's me. I know you're in there, so just open up. The boys saw you up here yesterday. Look. They ain't gonna wait, and I ain't gonna wait. We leave in the morning, so just finish playing Hermit and have your ass at camp like sunup. Maybe we'll understand more if we listen to the next holotape, labeled March 28th. What in the hell's wrong with you? You don't get to vanish like this. I don't care how many booby traps you hide behind, Coral. We're still here. He's your kid, not mine. So you better get your shit together and come find us when you're done with this idiocy. 200 years later, we know why Coral has decided to play the Hermit, but this mysterious voice doesn't. Yet. Maybe you figured out something a long time ago, and I'm just learning it now. Just wasn't fair, Coral. Not for this kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure thing, kiddo. I'm hungry, too. And there's nothing for us here. Let's go. 
Cowardice and selfishness go hand in hand. Coral was a coward who couldn't face the coming future. She could have easily gotten her child and brought her child to the underground basement. She could have easily warned her friend or the other people at the campsite. But maybe she sat there thinking, if I tell them, I'll have to share resources. I'll have to share my food. I'll have to share my water. There's not enough room in that cellar for everybody. Maybe I'll just go alone. I know mechanics. I know electricity. I can defend myself. I'll set up booby traps. No one else will know. And more importantly, I won't have to share resources. But someone does know. Her child sees her enter the club. Everyone else at the campsite knows that she's there. And so she has to wait out the next month, listening to recorded messages from people whom she said she loved, but whom she abandoned. I can't imagine a parent abandoning their child, forcing another human being to become de facto parent because you're just so scared. But this cowardice, this greed, it didn't change things. Coral is not alive today. She's dead. She likely died after the bombs fell. She probably did not live long in that basement. At some point, she had to leave. We don't find a feral ghoul. We don't find a skeleton. She must have at some point left and then died like everyone else. All she did is betray the trust of her child. All she did is destroy her family because she was a coward. Tough situations reveal a person's true character. When we go to parties and when we go to dinners and when we go out with friends, we don't see people as they really are. We only see them as they want us to see them. But when there's an earthquake, we see them for who they are. When there's a tsunami, when there's a theater shooting, when there's a street riot, or when there's other tragedy, we see them for who they are. Who are we most like? Are we heroes, like the idealistic Peters who sacrificed herself for science? Or are we cowards like Coral, who betrayed everyone she ever loved? The frustrating thing is that we really don't know. We don't know until something like that happens, and thank God most of us have never had to live through something like that. I pray that none of you listening ever will have to. But only then will we really know who we are. It's fine and dandy to talk about noble ideals, or to make YouTube videos about them. But it's a completely other thing to be tested, to be forced to make that choice. Will I be a coward or will I be a hero? I don't know which one I would be. I'd like to think that I would make a heroic choice. I'd like to think that it'd be self-sacrificial, but I don't know. I won't know until it happens. But if we're going to be heroes, if we do sacrifice ourselves, for something greater, whether it's for our children, whether it's for our country, whether it's for some noble idea that we believe in, let's try to do it in a smart way. Let's do it in a way where we're not being used by larger powers that be. Let's do it in a way where the sacrifice actually means something, where we're not sacrificing ourselves or our possessions or our time for things that don't really matter in the end. If we do have to be heroes, Let's be smart about the causes that we choose so that it's not all for nothing. If you like this series, please subscribe for more Fallout 4 lore and Fallout 4 unmarked locations. I come out with videos like this quite frequently, so please subscribe for more. This has been your friendly neighborhood Oxhorn, and thank you all so much for watching.